Hopefully you can hear us and welcome to the World of Tanks Pro League Season 2. We are getting pretty much underway now. We're mm -hmm. uh, pretty far into this season. Actually, we are into match day 9 and 10. Indeed. It's been flying by, to be fair. Now, obviously, you guys may notice this lovely man beside me. It is laughter as per usual, or Ollie, whatever you really want to call him. We just make it up as we go along. But uh, <laughs> we do have our lovely, incredible lady here for social media as well, the one, the only Melly. So we do have the full team finally around us, and we do have some incredible games as well. So make sure... You guys stay around because this is going to be a fantastic day. Not only are you going to see the top team almost straight away, these guys haven't lost yet, bear in mind. These guys are on a completely yeah. clean record, and it's pretty impressive. They've had some close games. I think you can give us some depth into that in a moment. But not only that, you've got you know the top kind of tiers going out. You've got Evil Panda Squad coming up as well today yeah. against the kind of middle table. So, you know, there's a lot of games coming up that can really decide a hell of a lot, especially we're getting halfway through the season now. We're, we're yeah. pretty much there. So every game counts, every matchup counts. And why don't, why don't you talk us through some of those close games as well? Because as I said, we are going to be seeing Virtus Pro. Yeah. Now, these guys, they're pretty damn good to say the very least. You know, just they, a little. <laughs> just a little bit talented. But you already mentioned to me, we were having a little talk before, and you said, you know, these guys did have a close game, though, and do you yeah. go go into that one because I, sure. I I do remember vaguely, but I'm you know you're the Wikipedia of World of Tanks, so. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, they actually played Kazan Crew, um, and they struggled. You know, Kazan Crew, they really took it into the hands to try and put the game to Virtus Pro, uh, and they went two 0 up actually. I think they won. Yep. Uh, the last second map was was on Abbey. Uh, very very well played by Kazan Crew, but then Virtus Pro, they kind of. Uh, they sneaked their way into into the last game, and uh, they, 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 they took that one, and then they used the momentum, and they actually ended up winning 3-2, which is, it's not unheard of. We see it quite a lot of yeah. teams, you know, winning 3-2, but still, it, considering that the odds are completely against you, you know, you have to win three games on the trot. Um, it it's was not a very, easy. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. was, it was a very well play, some very well-played games by them. Um, just looking at last season, I mean, yeah, 21 wins to one loss, as we say. Um, you know, last time Mouse Sports and uh, Virtus Pro played against each other, which will be mm. our first game, um, played a match day th three and match day 14. Virtus Pro actually won 3 2 nil. Um, but having said that, you know, Mouse Sports were a much more inexperienced team back then. You know, things change. Even three match days in, and then even 14 match days in, um, such an inexperienced team, and now Mouse Sports finishing third in the first season are looking so much stronger. Uh, and I think we're going to see at least uh, a closer game. Well, they're, they're currently ranked seven, so they're, they're already kind of around that middle table, and they had a bit of a rocky start, not a great start. No, not for and then they kind of built yeah. from it, and they've, they've been getting the results, and they've been doing fairly well now. So obviously, this would be a really rather good proving point, to say the very least. Yeah. But uh, obviously, you've heard our kind of thoughts about what's going on today. You know, there are some fantastic games on the way. And, you know, the, the game's already happened a phenomenal. Make sure you check them out on the uh, WOTProLeague.com because all the VODs are there. You've got to watch them because what you're seeing so far has been absolutely fantastic. But obviously, we want to know your thoughts towards it and we want to know how you, know, you guys feel about the matchups coming up because we do have a couple of, you know, not necessarily fan favourites, mm. but top you know, obviously top of the scoreboard favourites, say yeah. the very least. These guys normally hit you know, the very top markers. So I kind of want to know your predictions and I know a certain someone who's normally pretty good at taking us through this kind of stuff. So... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, should we, should we introduce the uh, third and final member of the team today? Hello, Millie. Hi, Pansy. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, and I'm really excited. So hope you all had a good weekend ho at home and, um, yeah, ready for some tank action. And when it comes to predictions, we will have some um, votings on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WOTProLeague, where you can predict the outgoing of uh, every matchup we will show today. And, uh, of course, we want to hear your opinions, your feedback, and um, everything else you wanted to s share with us. And you can use Twitter for this, of course. Our Twitter account is the same as the Facebook one. And you should see it, or you should have already seen it right under my face. <laughs> and, um, yeah, if you have any questions regarding the game, regarding the matchups, and anything else, just text me those questions and I will get your answers from our experts. That's a worrying term of expert, isn't it? Yeah. Considering the last kind of questions we had, expert is a strong word. To be fair, the most awkward thing that's happened to you land. Those kind of <laughs> yeah. questions, we can keep to a minimum today. We've got some good yeah. damn games about to happen. So, obviously, uh, we've, we've kind of ha learned how the viewers can get our predictions mm -hmm. you know, across to us. But what's your prediction for this one? Because, obviously, you know, there's there's two very good teams. Mm. Um, 
I think, as you said, Mouse Sports is one of those teams who are kind of working off a bit of a confidence boost now. You know, they had a rocky start. They've kind of built up a lot. But then Virtus Pro, they're, they're just the pillar. You know what I mean? They're, they're the team that yeah. can't be moved. Do you think this is a match we could see something happening in? Or is this just going to be, you know, another kind of usual Yeah, call? yeah, another. I don't know. I think um, Virtus Pro, they're not going to win... You know, not going to win by a landslide. You know, this is not going to be. Even if they win three nil, the games are not going to be. You know, seven tanks for life for Virtus Pro and none alive for yeah. uh, Mouse Sports. It's going to be a close game either way. Maybe there'll be a couple of maps which some of the teams, you know, get a bit lucky and get an easy break on. Um, but I can't see this being an easy match for both teams. I mean, no, Virtus Pro are the online champions, as you said. You know, these guys have a knack for winning online uh, games all the time. But you know, offline events they're a little shaky, and I think. There has to be a reason for that, and, and Mouse Sports and all the other teams have to find a way in which they can break Virtus Pro's meta game. Um, and you know, yeah. it's not impossible. I mean, uh, Team Dignitas, who actually came first in the first season, have already lost one game against Kazuna Crew. So, uh, you know, the, possibly the stronger teams already won match down. Yeah. So, why can't a team do this against Virtus Pro? I have no idea. Well, it seems that Kazuna Crew, the team that just <laughs> like to really rustle feathers, and yeah. once you know, challenged Virtus already, and. They are a fan favourite for a reason, obviously. I do love those guys, and yeah. obviously the Spale lot as well. I can't say anything about Kazna <laughs> Crew without mentioning Spale, because they're, they're such characters. But you know, when I watch you know, these guys play, when I've seen Verdus Pro play, they seem you know, very drilled in, very you know, serious. There's no room for error when they play. No, it's no. all very much you know, to the point. And do you think that it just it helps them, do you think? Because obviously people haven't been able to touch them. So I guess you know, keeping that very serious mentality online works. Yeah. It definitely helps them. I mean, they're so regimented, as you said. Um, they're, they're so well disciplined. Um, and I think uh, in, in this way, in an online where it's more about, um, you know, as a player, trying to keep yourself in line, trying to keep yourself in check, yeah. as opposed to the team as a whole, uh, it's so important. And, and to have that synergy you have at offline events in, in an online environment is, is, is the key. It's so important. And it's what these guys do so well. Um, but, you know, I think, as I said, they somewhat, some team has to find a way to beat them. You know, they have to... Uh, it's, it's, it's a team that uses a lot of momentum in their gameplay. Right. You know, they win by momentum. Uh, they don't win because, you know, they have necessarily the better tactics or player. You know, they, they win a couple of games and suddenly they're just... It's like a snowball effect. They keep yep. on going and going and going. And that's why they have, uh, what, eight, eight, eight wins, <laughs> nil losses. It, it's, it's a scary thing to see on the web page. Yeah. I was looking through it already so I came into the office and I was like, right, I'm going to have a little check, see what's going on, because, you know, I, we, we kind of focus on the games we get to see and Indeed. sometimes we might miss some of the others that are going on and it's like, okay, I need to have a little refresher. And it's just daunting to look at their track record already. It is mm. absolutely ridiculous. So make sure you check it out, wtproleague.com. It's absolutely unbelievable. Just looking at them through season one, season two, and you know, to this point, they're still almost untouched. It's yeah. incredible. Do you think they, they, they might tire out towards the end of the season, or do you think they're just going to build up and build up? As you said, they do like their momentum, but yeah. do you think there might be you know, a little bit of, you know, oh, I'm getting a little bit tired here, or do you think they're a team that don't even feel that, really? Um, I think possibly. I mean, I would have said maybe last season that wouldn't have been the case. They would have been, you know, they've been a set of players that have been around for a long time and have been playing yeah. as a team for a long time. But with all their new players in their team, I think uh, they could get more time and it comes slightly less uh, consistent towards the end of the season um, because, you know, they're not used to playing with each other. And suddenly, mm. you know, all the little things where, you know, perhaps like a motivation and momentum kind of covers up suddenly you're gone when you're playing your, your 20th match day um so uh, in in this such a sport, short space of time obviously these teams are playing two matches every day yeah, um so i think um yeah we could possibly see them being a team that slips a little bit towards the end of the season well i do believe we are actually gonna get underway in the tank picking here because these two teams are not gonna wait around for a second so you take us through what we're seeing so far there's it seems very typical to me i'm not seeing anything kind of jumping out at me yet so uh do we think we're gonna see almost a mirrored pick here yeah, I think we'll probably see a mirrored pick. I mean, as I always say, the T69 and the MX3090 picks are always down to the team preferences as opposed to anything uh, maybe tactical or, or, or player skill-wise, I guess, yeah. um, player preference. Um, Snip picking the T1 and the MX3090, a standard pick uh, on Prokhorov to start off with, uh, and Kusok picking the T1 and the MX3090 as well. Uh, Snip going again for a T1 and AMX 1390s, so that'll make it two, two, two T1s, two AMX 1390s. Uh, well, Kusok really going for the T69 and the T1. 
Uh, and actually, interestingly, uh, Mouse Sports going for a double T69 as their next pick. Um, we don't usually see, well, it depends. We usually see teams opting for the yeah, MX-3090 as it's obviously mm. a very big map. You want to be having a very fast tank. Uh, and the T69 is obviously not quite as quick as the 1390. So interesting pick from Mouse Sports there. Yeah. Uh, VP Pro versus Pro even picking double uh, AMX 3090 and T69 uh, while uh, Mouse Sports picking a T1 AMX 3090 and uh, the last two picks will be your T69 so uh, on the side of Virtus Pro we have uh, three T69s, two AMX 1390s, two T1s, pretty standard pick from them uh, while Mouse Sports are going for the uh, triple T69 double AMX 1390 two T1s so mirrored lineup in fact yeah so we're gonna have to really just see how they play against each other you know the tanks will make no odds in this you say it all the time you know it's it mm -hmm. comes down to the player more than the tank a lot of people kind of misread i guess you know a lot that may go into it but uh, clearly we're just gonna have to see if they can uh, just challenge straight away that's uh, i want to see how they kind of yeah. face each other off of this map because you do get to see some fantastic battles we've already seen some beautiful games go down on this very map so i'm, I'm looking forward to it and with this map in mind with those tanks picked are you sticking with your guns here are you sticking with Virtus pro i think um it will have to be Virtus pro i mean they won this map 14 times for nil losses in season one what an incredible track record that is uh, mm. in, but you know <laughs> they actually lost it a couple of times in in uh, in the offline finals, so yeah. it, even against, I mean, I mean, Dragon Balls beat them on on this map easily. Um, so it, it's a definitely a good map for them. Yeah. Um, and then I if they continue that momentum for season one, uh, then th they will be a very hard team to beat. Um, it, it just depends um, how they play. If they play as well as they do in season one, if they, if they don't, uh, then th they they're going to struggle. Yeah. Cool, so uh, we're just waiting for the teams to go. Uh, just going to give them the go-ahead. Uh, now we're ready. So uh, we have got a couple of changes to the, uh, the way you'll uh, be able to view the game today. Uh, I'll explain it a little bit more. It's kind of a little secret. I know. Moment. I was <laughs> waiting for them to... M they might notice the flags looking yeah, a little bit different. that's a little taster. It's a little taster. We, we do have a, look, yeah, a couple of treats coming up for you guys, so yeah. do keep that in mind, obviously. Uh, this man next to me, he knows just about everything, so I'm going to leave him to explain all the goodies to you, because we're, we're trying to bring a little bit of flavor to it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think the things we have so far are looking pretty good, but I don't want to say too much. I think we are just uh, almost ready to go here. So, obviously, you're sticking with your guns, and just to, you know, make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going go for mouse sports. I've got to. I've got to help them out here. I'm like, yeah. You love your underdogs, then. I do. I can't help myself. I do like, you know, seeing someone, you know, obviously do well. But it's Prokhorevka. So here we go, it's Virtus Pro versus Mouse Sports, our first game of the day. Uh, our map will be Prokhorovka. Uh, and let me just explain before the uh, action starts how our new system will work. As you can see at the top of your screens, you have two numbers, two all. Uh, that's because we have four spectators in today, one, uh, one tier point per spectator. So there's two on each team, so that makes it 2-2. Two, two. Uh, ignore that, that's just a little bit of a, you know... It's a work in it's progress. It's a work in progress thing, but we yeah. sure you would just let you uh, have a little look at it today. Um, obviously, just imagine that's zero. So uh, this is pretty much a scoreboard. As, as a tank will be killed, it will be added to the uh, to this to these two numbers here. So if, let's say an AMX 3090 dies, uh, this will go up to 10, uh, and then there will be an arrow showing the advantage to Virtus Pro. So you'll see uh, their color, color go uh, more towards the side, showing that they have the advantage. So uh, you'll see how it works. And also we have uh, a mini map mod also. Yeah, and it looks pretty good to me, but Puzzling has found a good couple of shots off already. The shells are landing quite nicely, holding Virtus Pro at bay pretty much. And uh, I think it's Sniff actually coming around to try and help him out a touch. It is all going down in the village right now. So you can see, uh, literally, Mouse Esports are looking uh, like they're going to get the damage done. Carmen doing the same. Just uh, laying down a couple of shells, keeping them just where they are. 
So we're just going to have to find out who's going to really break the silence right now. Good exchange is going down. Carmen is being damaged heavily as we speak. And, uh, well, could be in trouble if uh, Rest in Peace comes round on that left side. Yeah, Carmen's now in trouble. 169 left on that T69. Doesn't look like Virtus Pro has really lost that much health. Christopher did just take a big shot from uh, Kusok in that T69. But Elian's to the side, and, and there we can see... Peter and his T1 heading up the hill as well, so he'll be able to get good spots, keep the uh, lights up onto Virtus Pro, uh, making sure that Mouse Sports can continue a little bit of damage onto them. Uh, but they are taking a real pummeling, and, and strangely enough, because you would have thought Virtus Pro has the disadvantage because they are on the slightly lower ground where they are. Mm. Yeah, but they keep getting called out. Every time Puzzling moves forward, he manages to land a shell. And one way or another, it's slowly but surely just chipping away at the Virtus Pro side. So this isn't a bad start, really, for Mouse Sports. They're doing okay. They have split those T1s off down that zero line just to keep eyes in case, you know, they get flanked here and trying to help out the bigger tanks towards that little village area. But we do see Puzzling edging a little bit closer. He has been spotted. Going to have to back away now. Yeah, Karitz is going in. The team leader, Christopher, just took a big shell down to three. But there we go. Christopher taking care of Karitz, no problem at all. Uh, Snip actually taking down Kusok. Wow. So the advantage goes into uh, Mouse Sports' favor. And as you can see on your screens, our new scoreboard shows that. And then Kamemiko replying for a kill onto uh, Mouse, onto Carmen, in fact, in that T69. So one tier eight tank each. Yeah, indeed. So, Carmen down out. Snip follows suit. As now Christopher is in a world of trouble. You can see the one pushing up to his left. Oh, the shells are running. Left front, so a 93 HP left on Christopher and taken away from him. And, well, that's got to hurt. So, already not going exactly the way Mouse would have wanted as now they are surrounded and being absolutely decimated. Puzzling is in an absolute pick, we'll say the very least. He's got just cause in front of him. He's landed the shell, but it's not enough to do anything as Virtus Pro just stamped their dominance again. Yeah, Virtus Pro playing very well, and I think that just goes down to the fact that Virtus Pro they had the uh, they have slightly higher player skill. I think in that situation, yeah. they took the shots when they needed to. They they avoided the damage they needed to. Uh, both teams didn't have any particular advantage. I mean, even Mouse Sports perhaps had the more advantage. They just took less damage, Virtus Pro, and and they used the buildings and the, the limited cover they had perfectly, uh, even when they weren't behind the house. So that's that's how you win. Uh, in terms of hit points and in, in, in engagement like that. Uh, yep. But now it's really up to Virtus Pro to just finish this game because Elian is a dangerous, dangerous man in that AMX 1390. Yeah, and the positioning is fantastic for him. He's literally keeping Overwatch right now. He's allowing the T1 to do a little bit of spotting. He's got another shell connected onto Breakneck there, knocking him down to 338. But it seems like the base is trying to be captured. Do you think they're just trying to draw them in to allow Elian to get some shots off or get the shells down? Yeah, I think that's probably what he wants to do. I mean, they don't have to worry too much. They've got rest in peace uh, in his AMX 1390, one of their best players. Uh, still sitting quite comfortably at 1.1k HP. Uh, he'll be able to do the damage. He'll be able to stop the cap. I mean, he's pretty much free to do anything with the support of uh, his uh, two teammates, Amelka and Breakneck, sitting in those T69s. Rest in peace, actually, just pushing forwards now. Probing, trying to find, I uh, believe that's Peter in his uh, T1. Uh, he's capping he's down to 43 left on the capper now. Uh, rest in peace, will probably be able to get the shot off straight away. Uh, no, he won't. He actually misses his shot oh, onto Peter. Wow. Uh, Peter playing very well, moving backwards and forwards, wasting at least one shell of uh, Virtus Pro, and now Elian can push in. Yeah, he's trying to do some work, but Breakneck was there, ready and waiting. And it's just not exactly the way you want things to go down in any way, shape, or form. So Virtus Pro retain that rather strong kind of grip yeah. over the World of Tanks scene so far. <laughs> you know, these guys, they're not moving anywhere. So uh, clearly looking pretty good in the first map there. Mm. The early exchange was very even, very close. You know, a couple of shells back and forth. And I thought, oh, Mouse have got a nice connection. Yeah. They weren't doing badly. And as soon as Virtus Pro just went, ah, we had enough now. We're, we're going to just bump it up a gear and just, you know, really get into the flow of things. But what, what stood out to you from that game? Was there any particular you know, bit of play that Virtus Pro kind of brought out that kind of went, ah, okay, that's very smart? Or was it literally just that kind of individual player skill? They just played out there, one-on-one's better. I honestly think that's the case. I mean, uh, a lot of people come up to me and say, oh, you know, why does this team always win? You know, is it luck? Is it, you know, do they get the higher damage yeah. roll or the penetrations? And I say, no, you know, it's it's... If you put these, if you put two teams together in a, like a, a, I don't know, like an arena environment where there's no obstacles, there's nothing, there'll still be one team that will win more than any other team. They'll still win, you know, like 55% of the yeah. time, even if they're just, you know, in a completely open space. And that's what Virtus Pro will be that team because then, I mean, they just got the shots off and they avoided the damage and they had the spatial awareness to really it play fantastic. one out. Exactly, play that one out. And, 
And I think that's what, what you need as a team as a base, you know. If you don't have that as a base, you're going to struggle against a team mm. that does have it as a base. Yeah, indeed. And it's nice seeing, you know, even though they do have that fantastic kind of play yeah. as individuals, they also have that teamwork built in. So you see, like, every now and then I'll see, you know, a really standout player for a team who just, you know, always there, always in the action. But with these guys, every single one of them is just on that, you know, on that par. Yeah. If any of them get the opportunity to go big, they can do it. It's not just down to one player who can kind of, you know, pull it out of the bag. It's, it's pretty damn impressive. So I don't think we're going to be waiting around too long. I think we're actually ready to go into the tank picking in the second map here. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Mouse Sports picking off first. Uh, T1 AMX5100 will be their choice. I mean, we are sitting on Ruenberg at the moment. Yep. Uh, our second map. So we're expecting, what, AMX 1390s. Um, perhaps an AMX, uh, well, one AMX 3090, perhaps uh, two if a team feels adventurous, but you, you'll probably see uh, our AMX 5100s being the predominant tank, maybe a T69 there if we're lucky. Uh, as we can see, uh, Berta's Pro picking second T1 AMX 5100. Uh, Mouse Sports replying, as I said, with an AMX 3090 and a T1. Uh, Berta's Pro following Mouse Sports' lead here, taking a T1 and AMX 3090 as well. Um, as we're just waiting, I think this might be Mal Sports's pick actually, so they're choosing okay. to go north, I believe. Um, uh, so they think that's perhaps the stronger side. Um, but as I, as I always say, you know, these maps are, are quite symmetrical. I mean, you yeah. can see on the mini map on your screens right now. I mean, yeah, there's a couple of differences here and there, but if you've played us on random battles or you've played it perhaps uh, in, in uh, another 7 versus 7 tournament or even if like a 14 or 15 versus 15 tournament, uh, this map is pretty damn balanced. Um, it has its pros, some sides have its cons as well. Uh, as tank picking continues, uh, Mouse Sports picking double AMX 5100. It did say that would be the predominant tank, and it doesn't look like Mouse Sports uh, have gone with those picks. Um, T69 uh, and an AMX 3090 from mm. Virtus Pro. Um, quite an interesting pick from them. That will mean they'll have two AMX 3090s. I did say that might be the case. Uh, yeah. they, wanted, they wanted to go in perhaps with the more lo mobile lineup. Uh, we'll have okay. to see. Um, but, you know, as uh, is often the case, both teams opting for a uh, T69, that American Tier 8 medium tank, uh, as their final choice. Um, so that will conclude tank picking uh, on Ruenberg. Um, looks like Mouse Sports going for the uh, more robust lineup, perhaps. Triple AMX 5100, AMX 1390, T69, and of course those two T1s to do the additional spotting and capping mm -hmm. pressure. Uh, looks like uh, and Virtus Pro have gone for uh, double T69, double AMX 3090, which supplemented by uh, heavy firepower of rest in peace in his AMX 5100, and of course those uh, two T1s in there as well. Yeah, and do you think that's going give, to give a little bit of a hand to what we might be seeing coming out here? Because obviously you said uh, Mouse not going for the overly aggressive kind of picks here, but we've seen quite you know, a, a fast tank kind of selection going on for Mouse. Uh, sorry, Virtus Pro. Do you think that's actually going to come into play in this, or...? Yeah. Is it just preference more than you know the actual tank? I, I guess you know the yeah. bonus to picking that tank. You know, I I, I think that's perhaps the case when you're just ch choosing maybe one or two, one different tank, perhaps two. But in this case, this is definitely a tactical decision. They definitely picked this quite unique lineup on mm. this map for a reason. They've obviously got a plan for it. They've obviously been training on it, and they'll think it ready. Uh, it, it works. I hope. I think they're hoping it works. I, I don't think we've seen this before, but we haven't really seen any Virtus Pro games so far, so uh, we'll have to see. Yeah, we're going to surely find out if uh, Virtus Pro really do deserve that clean slate they have so far. And uh, as you said, Ruenberg, fantastic map to see it on. We're seeing various picks, but uh, nevertheless, all in the hands of extremely skilled players here. So obviously, this is the second map. We saw the first going in favour to Virtus Pro, so already retaining that clean slate to this point. But things could change. Ruenberg could be the changing factor here. We have seen, obviously, a slight variation in the tank picks for them. And we're going to have to see if it's going to pay off. Welcome back. It's Virtus Pro versus Mouse Sports. We just saw Virtus Pro playing really, really well on Prokhorovka, taking the win quite, quite easy against Mouse Sports, as you could say. Uh, but before we uh, 
have our first engagement for those who have just joined us, uh, didn't watch the previous game, I'll just explain a little how this scoreboard, our new scoreboard works. Uh, Next week, obviously, these two numbers will be zero, but they're, they're at the moment two all because there are two spectators, T1 tanks on each team, so it's 2-2. Two, two. But imagine they're zero or just add however many points to it and then deduct it uh, at the whenever you've added it, after you've added it. Whatever you like, it's uh, up to you. Lots of adding yeah, going it's a on lot, there. It's, it's hard for uh, Pansy to do it, but for us... <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's basically a scoreboard, and you'll see when the team has the advantage because uh, they will have the more, uh, I don't know, dominance with their color. You'll mm. see it push over towards the various sides. Uh, so that's our scoreboard, and obviously now we have the uh, mini-map mod as well. So do enjoy those changes, but now we're just uh, into the game versus Pro versus Mouse Sports. Uh, Virtus Pro only spotting out one uh, AMX 1319, that's obviously Elian. Yeah, uh, obviously the return spot there between them all on that zero line, but uh, I'm not sure if Virtus Pro will actually expect Mouse to have such a presence here, literally. Everything bar the T1s is completely on that nine and zero line right now, and uh, a couple of shells just landing around them, but no real connections here. But uh, guys, do let us know your thoughts on this overlay as well. Let us know if you're enjoying this. I'm sure Melly can keep track of that somehow, maybe. She can, you know, if there's good feedback, let us know, and uh, obviously... And you do see Alien again catching a glimpse just beyond the houses there, dancing on the line almost, just trying to keep anything at bay here, trying to get those early connections, because they can make such a big um, impact later on. Indeed, and we saw the first connection actually, Just Cause connecting a nice little shell onto Puzzling him, and he wasn't a high damage roll particularly, but uh, as we talked about and how, how important it is for the uh, teams to make the early connections, that's what won Virtus Pro's uh, previous games. Uh, and it's not just the early connections, it's, it's any connections, because you know, making the early connections, it's a skill in its own, but it's a skill brought about by just general situational awareness. Uh, puzzling, taking one or two shots, but it didn't really matter because uh, Kusok got caught out a little bit. They've been taken down to 537 health in his AMX 1390. So at the moment, actually, if Mouseport's push, they will have the HP advantage. Yeah, but they look fairly static. I don't know if they're confident enough to just push against Furthest Pro. You know, the name is enough to kind of keep you at bay, but uh, we're going to have to see if they can rally themselves together. It looks like Slim and Carmen do look like they want to kind of edge a little bit closer. That T69 has been so pivotal, you know, just keeping them at bay, making sure they can't push too far down that main street that is, you know, around that E line there. So, uh, yeah. yeah, interesting start. So we can see scoreboard in action. Three is the number as... Uh, Looks like uh, Virtus Pro just lost Kareets. Their team captain is T1, so one is added to their Mouse Sports' score. Uh, so they are actually winning at this point. Kareets, uh, very important actually, because he, he had the vision down the zero line. Um, so now he's gone. It's going to be a little harder for Virtus Pro to put some pressure on to Mouse Sports because they won't have the vision and they won't be able to spot. But just cause. Trying to, to try and find out perhaps if there's, he gets spotted because then he can f see that Mouse Sports has perhaps a tank in here, one of these bushes, or towards perhaps this line up here. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a tricky one because if he gets caught out, he will get focused down really, really quickly. Yeah, and uh, ris risky, not risky as such, but it's a gutsy start from him. You can still see the mouse not fancying pushing, they are pretty much keeping themselves at bay, not wanting to be too aggressive, not wanting to lose anything out, because it can literally come down to things like this, you know what I mean? That initial kind of mistake if they made it. But, once again, very slow and tentative play for a mouse. They're, they're happy playing the waiting game, but uh, I, I don't know if it's going to pay off for them. You know, we already saw the exchanges in the last map. It was very much a uh, Verlis Pro show, but another spot coming out there. And uh, just making Snip retract back, but I do think a shell just connected onto him as well. Yeah, that was definitely from uh, Breakneck. No, just causing his AMX 1390 sitting up in the ruins towards the uh, F line, we used to call it because it looks like an F. Um, <laughs> and uh, he connected his first shell onto Carmen. He'll actually connect his second where shell 250 going down onto him. Another one, 230, 223 damage. Uh, just Cause has found himself a very tidy little place there, connecting a total of four shells onto. Uh, uh, Carmen in his AMX 5100, taking him actually to about half, over half health, probably losing about 60, perhaps 65% uh, in his AMX 5100. Now he'll be able to retreat, now he's unspotted. Uh, obviously, the uh, AMX 3090 has a pretty good camo value being only like, you know, you could pretty much pick it up and put it in your, in, in your uh, pocket if you wanted to. You know, he's, <laughs> he's going to try and perhaps group up for a push um, with the rest of his team. 
Yeah, indeed. And the spots are finally coming out in return from Mouse Snip. There has got a glimpse of two. The first connects there, and uh, so does the second. Breakneck being taken down as well. And this is much better. Snip has to retract back. And well, it looks like Virtus Pro are forcing the hand of Mouse right now. Indeed. Uh, but, you know, Virtus Pro, you know, they have such a good HP advantage. It's going to be hard for them just to, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be quite hard for, for mouse ports to push onto them. I mean, you know, they know yep. they have HP advantage. They're sitting back, they're trying to do a little bit of damage here and there, hoping that a Melka spots out. Um, and when they have the real advantage, they're going to push forwards uh, and they're going to use that HP advantage and they're going to completely crush mouse ports if they're not in a, a, a position uh, to deal with that push. Uh, but now we're seeing a, a, a little bit of a move from Virtus Pro. They're pushing towards the F line. Uh, perhaps they will be wanting to go up behind Mouse Sports, a kind of pincer movement, I guess. You can see Amelka and Breakneck affirm that by pushing forwards as well. Uh, and I think Mouse Sports will be in trouble in this one. Yeah, I think Aswab kind of <sighs> understood that as well. These guys are trying to lock it down now. I, I don't know how well this one's going to be. You even saw Alien there stepping back, but it's not going well. Snip is already down. So this is not the start that Mouse really wanted to have here. No, definitely not. Melka doing a nice little shop on t into the top of the uh, MX-5100's turret. Uh, very nice play from that very experienced player. Uh, one of the most experienced players and probably, uh, I reckon, in the top two in that Virtus Pro team, along with mm. uh, Breakneck, probably their best player, in fact. And Melka going to push in. Uh, he's found Christopher. Christopher just took a big shell, two big shells, actually. 481 left on his AMX-5100. Uh, but Melka reversing, he doesn't want to get caught out. Yeah, you can see him still playing quite cautious. Oh, Christopher is being knocked down again. Oh, the shells are raining in right now. And rest in peace. And Breakneck are just enjoying the positional advantage that has just absolutely ripped apart Mouse. Yeah, you can see the scoreboard. Ma Mouse getting completely dominated, only taking that T1 down. Uh, you can see absolute superb play from Virtus Pro. This is exactly how you should play Ruinberg. Get the early advantage uh, and just completely roll with it. Just, you know, use your firepower, use your team perfectly. And surprisingly enough, you know, they could have even done this with, with two AMX 5100 lineups. I have yeah. no idea why they took that fast lineup. Yeah, I, I expected them to be making you know, a quick push, really applying the pressure very early on. They didn't have to. But uh, I, I expected more from Mouse then almost. They just, yeah. uh, it felt like they couldn't get into that game. They were always behind. They could never get an, an advantage. They got completely cornered in on that far right side of yeah. the map, and they could never get out of it. They tried to retaliate. They tried to get a couple of shells back and forth. They got some okay connections. Don't get me wrong. The early yeah. exchange wasn't awful for them. But they couldn't make anything out of it. Virtus Pro literally held them in place. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, but it, it's kind of frustrating to watch because... You know, it's not like Mouse Sports played badly, but no. they just didn't seem, to, as you said, to get into the game. It's yeah. like they saw the Virtus Pro name and they were like, we're not going to screw those yeah. guys. We're just going to lose the game kind of thing. You know, it's yeah. like almost like they it's gave the, the game away. It's not the conviction we see them uh, when they, we see of them and we expect of them even exactly. when they play against other teams. It just seems, you know, like it's the name that makes more difference in the, the team and the skill. It, it did seem like a little bit of a losing battle. As soon as you, it felt that you know Mouse's hand was being forced constantly by the, by Virtus Pro. Then yeah. every single exchange was led by Virtus Pro. You know, if they wanted to challenge, they challenged. If they wanted to do it at this position, they made it happen there and then. Mm. These guys literally forced their way through it, and it was, it's, it's impressive to watch. To be fair, because these guys controlled every element of that. Then you know. Mm. No tank was lost without them knowing why or where they were going to push afterwards. You know, you could see a couple of players trying to hold off the rotates. I think, who was it? Um, I think it was Carmen who actually already went back down the hill. You said that they might go on a flank. He thought, you know, that's probably going yeah. to be happening. He retracted back and still could do nothing about Virtus Pro pushing in. Yeah, I mean, it is a standard tactic from that yeah. side, from the north of Ruenberg, to push forwards and try and catch the other team out as they, as they drive across the open field or even yep. if they're sitting along the zero line with those bushes. But, you know, you, you do it at the beginning. It's like, it's like in the first two minutes. If, if a team you're playing against is stupid enough to do that, then, then that's fair enough and you win the game. But if they're not, then just get out of there. Just reverse, get yourself back into it, either a better position or at least like the neutral ground, same position uh, as your other team. You know, mm. Mouse Sports pushing forward for no reason at all. And Virtus Pro just clicking and, 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 and just doing the damage. I mean, there's, there was nothing really meaty about Mouse no. There's no conviction. I don't see why they would push so far forwards. Just, just they need to just really knuckle down and use the heads when they're thinking about what their moves.
that's the thing, because so, they are such a good team. Yeah. Like, I can't stress it enough, you know, Mouse aren't a bad side in any way, shape or form. But right there and then, I think everyone at home probably noticed it as well as we did, that they barely got into that game. And obviously, you know, the mental strain of it is, you know, really hitting home there. Yeah. So, I don't know, the, you know, my predictions of these guys, you know, bringing something a little bit, you know, interesting out is clearly dashed. But, uh... <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they can bring it back. We've seen, you know, the likes of Virtus Pro bring things back from, you know, on the brink of destruction yeah. as such against the likes of Kazna Crew. But whether or not Mouse could ever do it, they, they played a little bit like a mouse in that game. They, it was timid. It was there was no, you know, aggressive play. It was always, you know, in reaction to what Virtus Pro did. And I, I want to see more from them. I want to see them be a little bit more kind of in there and give it a little bit more. But we do have obviously more maps coming up, so yeah. it's not over yet. So I think the tank picking is just about to begin, so that's obviously a little glimpse towards that. I think they just sorted out a couple of issues as well, but they're going to be picking away anyway, so take us through what you think we're going to see here. It's here on Storff. There's not normally a lot of variation, but every time we say that, someone pulls out something a little bit obscure, but I, do you reckon this might be a team we see that from? Um, I don't know. They're certainly not known for it. Uh, Virtus Pro is certainly not known for it even, but Mouse Sports are pretty much the defining team for that. I mean, remember back into... Uh, uh, I think it was IEM uh, Hanover where they actually won the tournament by uh, picking a, a grill on Y Park, winning against Spell um, just about, uh, and that really worked for them. And, you know, they did the same on, on um, the uh, season one finals of DreamHack, uh, picking double grill on Ensk, in fact, uh, and that just didn't work out for them at all. That was, they just got blown away by Dignitas, uh, no problems. And, uh, you know, I don't think we're going to see anything unusual. I think that's kind of a fad. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we're going to see our standard lineups. In fact, we are uh, seeing our standard lineups. T1, T69 being picked by uh, uh, Virtus Pro to start off with a double T1 from Mouse Sports. Uh, IS3, T1 being replied by Virtus Pro. Uh, double Air, no, wow. Four Airmix 5100 being picked by, no, one each, two each even. Sorry, my bad. I can't read sometimes, I swear. Uh, double <laughs> double Airmix 5100 from Mouse Sports. Double Airmix 5100 from Virtus Pro. Uh, Mouse Sports picking an IS3 as well, uh, pretty standard pick these days, AMX mm -hmm. 1500 to uh, supplement that. Uh, and the last pick of Virtus Pro will be an IS3 as well, so uh, pretty much the same lineups apart mm -hmm. from that extra IS3 f uh, for Virtus Pro. Yeah, and uh, we see it time and time again, Himmelsdorf is one of those maps where you know it is pretty much standard tank picks, as you said, apart from the very few standout games. But uh, nevertheless, it is normally quite a... A usual handbook of plays and strategies. There's not, you know, too much variation that I've seen yet, but it does once again show how, you know, individually good these players have to be. And I want Mouse to really turn up in this one because everyone can play Himmelsdorf. They may not be able to play it as well as, you know, the likes of Virtus Pro or Team Dignitas, but everyone can play it. I want these guys to really show us what they can do here. Yeah, same. I'm hungry for a good game, yep. uh, and I think. If there's any a team that can come back from this, it has to be Mouse Sports. They have to do it here. They're skitting, as you said, on seventh place. It's not particularly good for a team that no. finished third. If they want to be getting in the top six, they have to win both the games against the teams uh, they should be winning against, and they have to make up the standout performances against teams like Virtus Pro, who are currently sitting in first in the season two uh, league table. Uh, we're just weighing on our final member from. Uh, Mouse Sports, I believe one of them was uh, restarting the route, and I believe that was Elian, who's usually uh, the standard AMX 5100 player from Mouse Sports, and also happens to be their team captain slash tactical master genius guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, but he's just joined in, so we should all be uh, ready to go. Um, yeah, so Elian explained that his internet dropped, so yeah, okay, GG. Um, but yeah. Everyone's ready. Everyone's ready. Yeah, indeed. So both sides are ready. We've seen two maps so far, and they've not really gone Mouse Sports' way at the moment, but things can change, things can turn around. Let's see if it's now. So Virtus Pro 2-0 up against Mouse Sports at the moment. 
You just saw them completely crush them on Ruhrberg, and they did the same, to be honest, on Prokhorovka. Mouseports have to get into this one. It is best of five, so Virtus Pro only need one more win to take it home. And just before the action starts, as I've been saying every game, uh, just explain the little scoreboard we have. Um, basically, if a tank dies, it's added to the scoreboard. Um, obviously, it's 2-2 at the moment it's because of spectator tanks. Um, that won't be the same in a few days' time. So just imagine those twos are zeros and you're all good. Uh, Virtus Pro pushing up the hill actually in the T69. I think they're going to do the standard tactic. Uh, if Mouse Sports uh, can get at least a couple of shots onto Melka, they'll, they'll get themselves into this game. They'll get an early start. Yeah, well, they put a big presence towards that hill, puzzling Christopher and Alien, leading the way up there. The MX-50 is leading, and that T-69 just behind. Here to see if they're going to get that connection. You said it could be fantastic for them if they do get an early exchange going down their way. Not pushing fully over the crest, just up towards the very tip of it, and then just holding off. You can see Puzzling is the one who's kind of edging closer. Do this is going to be where we see the early exchange going down. Yeah, Melka will spot Puzzling if he does put his uh, command attach over there. But it'll be too late for uh, Melka. Puzzling will get out there, no problem. Elian just took a shot, but now... Uh, it looks like Virtus Pro knows exactly what they're going to do. Amelka taking in two shots. He missed his second one onto Elian. So Elian well played by him. Uh, and actually, because of the uh, RNG in this game, Elian came up better off sitting at 898. While Amelka was taken down to 836. But now Virtus Pro have the information. They know that at least one AMX 5100 of uh, Mouse Sports plus a T69 obviously on there is on the hill. Uh, so they are going to push up. Uh, at least, well, they're going to push up Just Cause into a position they can defend that hill, they can defend their cap from, and hope uh, that Mouse Sports play into that strategy. Uh, we're going to have to see it. Christopher is already backing off from that hill, though, so not fancy in getting uh, too aggressive. The IS3 has been spotted there. Uh, there's Breakneck, and you did just see Christopher just plow himself into a house, so make sure you remember that, guys, and embarrass him later. But now, let's see, he's going to sit back now, obviously try and play a little bit more, you know, towards the centre of the map, because they do have that one T1 split down that one and two line, but there's a vast amount of this map they don't really have eyes on, so if we did see first Pro going a little bit aggressive through here, they could slip through, but it's uh, not the case right now, and we do just going to have to see Mouse really hunkering down and uh, trying to get this one under control and make sure they get it unlocked. So uh, Christopher uh, just joining up with Snip there, leaving Alien Puzzling. And I believe who's the last member on that hill? It is uh, Peter. So three of the team up on that hill, two split back by the flag. One obviously holding banana and that T1 split towards that one and two line. But it looks like the T69 is going walkabout. Yeah, well... You can kind of see the uh, Virtus Pro ballet performance they're doing. I mean, uh, you watch them on the mini map and they just move all the tanks perfectly. They're all moving at the same time, repositioning, going to their first starting position and then moving from that position to the second position and then from that position, if they have to, to their defensive position. It's all synchronized, it's all perfectly trained and timed and it's, it's one of the reasons why they're such a good team. Uh, Perfectly lined up AMX 5100s and IS3s along that line. Uh, Melka's pushed over towards the side to uh, spot and do the damage for Karitz, even uh, Las Vegas and Karitz will spot. Uh, Melka will provide the backup with that very, very powerful T69. Uh, four shell autoloader able to pump out uh, a tidy 240 damage per shot with 300 millimeters of penetration. Very nice tank, uh, especially in the hands of a capable player like Melka. Yeah, so still very. Not, not a slow start as such, but the uh, T1 of Caswell, I do believe, has finally uh, managed to spot, I think that's Las Vegas down there in the imposing T1, just uh, keeping eyes on that one and two line. We said it earlier, and just trying to keep them at bay, but he could be surprised if the rest of the team do show up here. Yeah, he could certainly, but, you know, uh, it's just about how Virtus Pro push onto Mouse Sports. They are definitely looking for the way in. A snip being spotted, actually, in the Amex 5100 uh, in the middle of the town, and I think Mouse Sports... Playing quite defensively at the moment. I mean, just cause he did receive a shell. So at the moment, Mouse Sports have this. Yeah. They have slightly more of the map. You know, they have the hill with the T69, Elian playing that. Uh, they have the whole of the two lines spotted by uh, the T1. Uh, just cause took another shell actually, taking down to 901, uh, not getting any spots out onto who was the the, the dealer. Uh, because, uh, I don't know, I think it might have been something to do with the way his tank was angled. He couldn't get, a uh, obviously, a viewport on, uh, which is essential if you want to spot a tank. But it was puzzling, I believe, sitting in his AMX-1500 on that hill. Uh, and rest in peace and just cause maybe want to push onto them. Uh, we'll have to see. 
Yeah, indeed. And Puzzling obviously holding strong up here. He's been here a while. He's been keeping eyes on it. And he did manage to catch a couple of glimpses down there in that uh, J line, pretty much. Just uh, making sure he doesn't let anything go past him or get by him. And obviously, those couple of shells always help out. So, very tentative start, though. Neither side, you know, being too aggressive. Being, you know, there was a little bit of a scuffle as such at the start, but just cause finally having a couple of shells landing on him from Mouseport. So this could be the turning point here. They need to keep doing this. They need to keep building that confidence and working down the opposition at their own pace if they have to do it that way. Indeed. At the moment, Virtus Pro getting a taste of their own medicine, you know. Yep. Uh, on the back foot, definitely getting the shots onto them uh, for no reason at all. Just cause pushing <sighs> forwards, taking a couple of shots, and then pushing you know, forwards again once he's taken those shots, not learning his lesson at all, and that's why he's sitting on 429 HP in his AMX 5100. And, and interestingly enough, Mouseports had uh, the balls, to be honest, to push uh, enough tanks up the hill uh, to actually spot onto Virtus Pro, uh, and it's definitely working because they kind of pinted Virtus Pro here. Yeah, and Alien has just managed to absolutely dominate Amelka there. Perfect positioning, pushed up to try and support, and it per just paid out perfectly. They expected puzzling, they did not expect Alien there, and well, that T69 very nicely played. Every shell connecting, giving finally Mouse a little bit of an advantage here. Yeah, they definitely have the advantage now. Eight points in the lead, in fact, that will be enough if the counter goes down to zero. Obviously, we're sitting on three minutes and 40 seconds at the moment. Uh, but Amelka getting caught out, as he sometimes does, to be honest, yeah. in his T69. But now Virtus Pro, they, they refuse to push up the hill. They did push up a fair bit. Um, and now they're going to push along the eight line. They can see uh, Breakneck pushing forward in his IS-3. Carmen spots out onto him. So now uh, Mouse Sports know exactly where Virtus Pro is. They know what they're going to do because this is one of their common tactics. Uh, but, you know, we could see a very um, tentative move, uh, well, a very tentative play by them because they've got to get the, the teams in the cap. They've got to get the tanks in the cap. Caswab obviously getting taken down, actually, by Karit. That is awful play from Caswab because he was the essential uh, tank to stop yeah. what Karit and Las Vegas are doing now, which is capping. Yeah, indeed, and that's forced. Once again, Mouse to swing around from that hill. That presence they have up there now has to come back to the flag and try and help out right now. As, well, Carmen's laying down a couple of shells, but received one just out of sheer surprise there being more than one tank on that banana line. Well, banana as such, and there we go. Finally lands one for himself, but does not does he expect Breakneck to be there? I don't think he did. So the exchange not looking great right now for Mouse, who are being absolutely flooded with Virtus Pro players. Yeah, but, you know, they kind of got them in a good situation. Carmen's taking so much damage. I mean, Qsop will probably take him down, and he does. Carmen falling in his IS-3, but now here comes Snip from behind. He will take down uh, Qsop, no problem at all, and now he'll have the backside of Joss Cause uh, to play with. Yeah, indeed, and uh, Snip obviously in a great position as well. And the exchange is going just about everywhere. Snip now has to back off. He's in a little bit of trouble receiving shells to the back as he's trying to get away. Christopher does lay down to five, but receives one in return. Rest in peace, lands that perfectly. And well, Mouse looking pretty timid at the moment. Indeed, indeed. Uh, it's, it's two tanks each. Rest in peace is probably actually reloading, so he'll be wanting Just Cause uh, to be there. And to be honest, uh, well... Elian will have the reload advantage. He will have the... Uh, oh, no, but he doesn't. He gets taken out. Uh, and I think that'll be the win for Virtus Pro because without Elian uh, in that T69, it would have been game over, I think. And unbelievable. <laughs> Why did uh, Snip push in and ram him? I have no idea. That was no need for him to do that because... He would have had the reload to take him out, and, and I just think he kind of gave up the chase yeah, a bit there. Sheer frustration alone setting in for Mouse there. They had some brilliant exchanges. We saw them happening. We saw you know them picking up a good couple of advantages, but they just never seemed to be able to stick with them then. Mm. It was, you know, we saw a good couple of individual plays even from those guys, but it just wasn't there throughout. What happened? I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> why did Virtus Pro win that? There was no reason. I mean, they lost a yeah. Melker at the beginning, and, and Mouse still lost. Um, and to be honest, there's no excuse for that. They, no. they, I mean, they have to get their, their synergy together because when Virtus Pro pushed, they were spotted really early, right? By yeah. Carmen in the IS-3 sitting along the banana road. Uh, then they should have just Moselized, got themselves into a, a comfortable position to defend. You know, Castle should not have died in that T1 at all because, yeah. you know, that was a really critical point because then... 
Crete and, and Las Vegas could could cap, no problem at all. Yeah. Um, and it put, forced Snib to go forwards in the AMX 5100, which made him go out of position, and it gave Virtus Pro a way in, and they exploited it to the max. And yeah, 3-0 to Virtus Pro. Yeah, a team like Virtus Pro will not let you know a chance like that, an opportunity that was handed on a plate to them for a mouse to get slipped through their fingers. So obviously, that is the first game out of the way, but we do still have one more coming up. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I know that there is a lovely lady uh, getting ready with some predictions, hopefully, and some of the results that we had going on. And can you give us a little update what you guys out there have been thinking. I don't know if I really want to know what you've been thinking out there, guys. <laughs> but obviously, we had a great game to start off with. So, Melly, uh, how's it going over there? Um, the community is still in the second map, so we ha don't have the end results of ah, the matchup yet. Okay. Because we're ten minutes ahead uh, for now, uh, from you know what I mean, <laughs> because of the delay. Well, but the predictions of the community on our Facebook vote uh, were, were after the first map 83% for wow. Virtus Pro, and raised to 86% for Virtus Pro. So that's yeah. pretty clear. And also on Twitter, um, we had some postings okay. that Virtus Pro will definitely make it 3-0. And also in the comment section of the uh, Facebook post. So the, the community was standing pretty, pretty much behind Virtus Pro. Yeah. I don't blame them for a bit of a safe bet, though. Virtus Pro haven't lost a game Indeed, yet. You know, yeah. they're, they're taking a little bit of an easy route out there. Yeah. I don't know. Are there any questions they weren't answered? Or is that pretty um, much it? Was it just know? let me... Check oh god. Oh god, chat. she's checking. Dun dun dun. <laughs> and dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, no questions so far. This is good. But <laughs> I mean no. <laughs> if More. you have any special questions to Pansy, keep them no, coming. Not me. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah exactly. Ignore, you got it right. ignore <laughs> Ollie. It's the Pansy Monday. Only no, it's for not. you, my this, dear. This this is a lie. <laughs> this is don't not. Don't ask happening. me questions. I don't know what I'm talking about. He doesn't. We, no. he's only here for his looks. True. You know, that's that's it, right? Yep. So that's probably the end of game one. So uh, obviously no questions. If you guys have any questions, please keep do them uh, coming, keep them exactly. calm because um, while you have yeah. us three here, you might as well. And they don't have to be, yeah, you know, they have to be World of Tanks related in theme. Um, in theme. But, you know, you can make them a little bit more general if uh, we have some if time. But we'll read them out, uh, especially for Pansy. She really enjoyed those questions last week. No. Nope. Um, so, yeah. Do keep them coming in, uh, preferably World of Tanks related. If not, anyway, do it anyway. We'll, we'll enjoy them. Yeah, indeed, because this man knows everything. I, I say it time and time again, but literally, it's like we'll be casting something. He just goes on a complete tandem about, you know, the, the turning speed, the firing speed, and the shell. He knows everything. If you want any information on your favorite tanks, get your questions in. If you want anything asked about Melly as well, she's here to be, you know, well, I'd, I'd say used and abused, but let's, let's not be too, you know... <laughs> Too mean. We love you, Melly. We missed you. We did miss Melly. I'm the only one being abused here, to be honest. That's so very you, true. You, 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 you're all right there. You've got no, uh, n nothing at fault, so it's all good. <laughs> but uh, anyway, guys, obviously we do have to take a quick break here. We have had a fantastic start to the match days here. We do have, uh, I believe it's Kazna Crew, is it? Kazna Crew versus Evil, Evil Panda, Squad. Panda Squad. Wow. So big personalities, big teams, and another big game on the way in about, let's, let's say about 10 minutes tops. Yeah. So stay tuned, grab a drink. We'll be back in a bit.